and we are with you 100 percent and always will be. Instead of punishing entrepreneurship, we are now promoting entrepreneurship. Especially that guy in the corner. Main Street is thriving and America is winning once again. You know, we're respected again. This country is respected again. Before going any further today, I want to take a moment to address something you've been reading a lot about, the illegal immigration crisis on our southern border. It's been going on for many, many decades and many years, and it has its ups and its downs, and all we need is good legislation, and we can have it taken care of. And we have to get the Democrats to go ahead and uh, work with us, because as a result of Democrat-supported loopholes in our federal laws, most illegal immigrant families and minors from Central America who arrive unlawfully at the border cannot be detained together or removed together, only released. These are crippling loopholes that cause family separation, which we don't want. As a result of these loopholes, roughly half a million illegal immigrant family units and minors from Central America have been released into the United States since 2014 at unbelievably great taxpayer expense. Nobody knows how much we're paying for this monstrosity that's been created over the years. Legislation that nobody has any idea what they're doing. They don't even know what it means. And you have to see this. It's a mile high. Child smugglers exploit the loopholes, and they gain illegal entry into the United States, putting countless children in danger on the perilous trek to the United States. They come up through Mexico. Mexico does nothing for us. You hear it here. They do nothing for us. They could stop it. They have very, very strong laws. Try staying in Mexico for a couple of days. See how long that lasts, okay? They do nothing for us, and I see it through NAFTA. I see with the $100 billion plus that they make on trade through NAFTA, one of the worst deals ever made by this country, a disaster. And we're trying to equalize it. And it's not easy, but we're getting there. It's not easy. And we're going to take care of our American farmers, and we're going to take care of our manufacturers and our manufacturing jobs. But they're making unbelievable amounts of money. And that's not including the drugs that are flowing through our border because we have no wall and we have no protection. The drugs that are coming in from Mexico and through the southern border is disgraceful. So we'll see whether or not we can make a reasonable NAFTA deal. Or deal doesn't have to be called NAFTA. We can do one-on-one -on -one with Mexico, one-on-one -on -one with Canada. And by the way, Canada, they like to talk. They're our great neighbor. They fought World War II with us. We appreciate it. They fought World War I with us, and we appreciate it, but we're protecting each other. There was a story two days ago in a major newspaper talking about people living in Canada, coming into the United States, and smuggling things back into Canada because the tariffs are so massive. The tariffs to get common items back into Canada are so high that they have to smuggle them in. They buy shoes and they wear them. They scuff them up. They make them sound old or look old. No, we're treated horribly. Dairy, dairy, 275% tariff. So basically, that's a barrier, without saying it's a barrier. And I told them, if they don't change their way, so we have a tremendous deficit. People say, well, there's really not that much of a deficit. Well, they're not including two things, energy and timber. And those are the two big things when it comes to Canada. Now, we have to change our ways. We can no longer 
be the stupid country. We want to be the smart country. So hopefully, we'll be able to work it out with Canada. We have very good relationships with Canada. We have for a long time, and hopefully that'll work out. But Canada is not going to take advantage of the United States any longer, and Mexico is not going to take advantage of the United States any longer. And when I campaigned, I said, I will either renegotiate NAFTA or I'll terminate it. And we'll start from an even base. And people are afraid of that, you know? I've had so many people, they come up, they say, oh, please don't terminate NAFTA. They say, but it's no good. Yeah, but we know what we have. It's true. <laughs> people are worried because they know what they have. If you look at, I love the American farmer more than anybody. They have backed me. I love the American farmer. <laughs> and by the way, I'll tell you in a little while, because it's in one of my notes, the American farmer virtually will not have to pay any more estate tax on their farms. When they pass away and they want to leave it to their children. And that goes for almost all small businesses. You won't have the estate tax to pay anymore, which was crippling. That was in our bill. I see a young guy is standing up now. He's too young to be leaving it, so that means he's a beneficiary. I don't know. Don't act too happy. There's a wealthy father there. Don't act too happy. Is that your father? Oh, wow. It, the answer is yes. Okay. And you know what? You're both happy, okay? You're both happy, and I'm honored to have done it, because it was destroying the estate tax, small businesses, and farms. Destroying them. People were mortgaging them to the hilt to pay the tax, and then they couldn't pay the interest on the mortgage, and the banks would take them away. You don't have to pay the estate tax any longer.